Shallow is not just a giant of the legal bar, he is a cerebral lawyer, he is redoubtable. He is an eclectic, brilliant, brilliant lawyer, and he has his book, Cross-Examination of the Analyst in Drug Prosecutions. It was his teaching to us criminal defense lawyers that challenged things we had taken for granted for a long time. At some point in the mid-1960s, I suddenly realized that in the run-of-the-mill narcotics prosecution, it boils down really to two witnesses. There's the agent who says, I seized it, and there's the analyst in a crime laboratory who says it's heroin. And I also realized that I didn't know if I ever would be skilled enough to get the agent to break down on the stand and say, Mr. Shallow, I'm sorry, I didn't buy it from the defendant, I bought it from somebody else. There appeared to be no reasonable disposition that the only witness left was the analyst. So then I started looking at what the analyst actually said and did. And the way they tested her heroin when I started in the 60s is they mixed it up with something called the Marquis reagent, and if it turned purple, the analyst said it was heroin. And I knew that there was something very seriously wrong with that. The mass spectrometer is a sensitive instrument. Each one of those peaks represents a fragment. A molecule of the same substance will always fragment the same way as another molecule of that substance. You can take those peaks and then combine the fragments in such a way that you can determine what the molecule is. But when they started using that instrument, there were probably only two or three hundred people in the country who were capable of what's called elucidating a compound by looking at a mass spectrum of it. And none of them worked for the DEA. And there was a professor at Cornell who came up with the following idea. I'll get the government to make standardized spectra of hundreds of thousands of compounds. And then I will develop programs so that a computer can take and match a mass spectrum against 300,000 potential matches and determine what's the most probable compound. The National Institute of Science and Technology, NIST, validated all of the spectra and prepared a database. You take somebody who says, I compared that mass spectrum with a mass spectrum of heroin, and uh, on the basis of that comparison, I reached the conclusion the substance is heroin. And you now have both spectra. You got them in discovery. You say, they aren't the same, are they? There are differences here. Which differences are important? Some differences you can ignore, can't you? Yes. And others are so important that you can't. Well, which are the ones that you can't ignore, and why? Well, in order to answer that question, you've got to have that PhD in physical chemistry. And you get the same answers from people who have a, a degree, a bachelor's degree in accounting, as you get from somebody who's got a PhD in toxicology and works for the FDA. The mass spectrum is really the reflection of numbers. And if you're lucky in discovery and diligent, you can get the numbers. And what it says is that the probability that that stuff is THC is 0.81. That means if someone were to testify that that's THC, he'd be wrong 19 times out of 100. You will see in the book the testimony of the witness. When I was through with Crime Analyst and we established that, I said, sir, you consider yourself a reasonable person? He said, yes. I said, when you see 0.81 as a match probability, that causes you to have a doubt as to what the substance is. He said, yes.